First, with so much of our lives now dominated by digital information, fewer people may be using libraries. But in countless communities, those libraries are still finding ways to be important places. At least one library in Maine is getting noticed for what it does. 207's Don Kerrigan is here with that story. Hey, Don. Hey, yes, I, I was just saying that I, I like libraries. My mother was a librarian many years ago, so always had a soft spot in my heart for libraries. You know, libraries play a lot of roles in our towns and cities. And in the small town of Liberty, the library and the librarian are being celebrated right now for doing exactly that. For those who just drive through, Liberty may not look like that much of a town. But down here, off the highway, is a whole different look at Liberty. A village with homes, businesses, a school up the street, and a library. And I'm usually sitting down while I'm doing this. <laughs> Overseen by a librarian and the only paid staff member, Barbara Raymeyer. This is clearly a hub of activity for the town. Yeah, as active as it gets, <laughs> you know, it's still a pretty sleepy little town. It's a town that until 1995 never had a library. Barbara says most people then just drove the 16 miles to Belfast if they needed a book. But then she and some others decided it was time for Liberty to have a library of its own. The fire department moved out of its building and after a big makeover, the library moved in. Our, our book budget's about $4,000 a year. A small library to be sure, but made much bigger by, of course, borrowing. These came in today. These are, this is a young man who ordered these two books. Barbara says Liberty is part of a consortium of small main libraries that share books. And there's a statewide internet book loan program as well. This one came from Millinocket, which is another library in our consortium. Books arrive every Thursday. Barbara manages it all and organizes programs, everything from printmaking to cribbage playing in the library. So when she spotted a contest in the National Small Library Association newsletter. Okay. The Solo Librarian of the Year Award will go to one of our members who wears the most hats of all, librarians who run the show all on their own. Barbara thought, <laughs> that's me. Yeah, that's me. So she entered the contest. And some blocks. And a couple of weeks ago, um, word came that Barbara Raymeyer had been chosen as the National Solo Librarian of the Year. For the whole country. For the whole country, right. What did you think? I was dumbfounded, actually. <laughs> but also typically humble. But, you know, then I got thinking about it. It's like, how many libraries are there in the United States with just one single li solo librarian? Um, probably not all that many. I mean, I'm sh there are some in Maine. I know that Vermont has, has quite a few. Um, and I'm sure there's some in the Midwest. But... You do have to put things in perspective. <laughs> People in town have no problem putting it in perspective, yeah. we were like former to town clerk Gail Philippi. I wasn't surprised, but I was, I was surprised. It was great and uh, well-deserved. Hmm. Uh, Not surprised because? Because Barbara is so good at what she does. Hey, Pete. Pete's one of our volunteers. And Pete Beckford farmer, poet, and one of several volunteers who help out every week. It's a total thrill. It's like, it's a thrill for the library and everybody that works here. Barbara was a teacher, and then for many years a school librarian in another town, before taking over the Liberty Library. You've obviously must have had a love of libraries most of your life. I have had a love of reading. Um, I love my school library. I was even in the elementary school. I was a library volunteer. Um, love, love children's books. Which helps explain the beautiful children's room up the spiral staircase, loaded with books. Sleeping in that cave was a very cranky bear. 
where she read to us. Barbara says she loves reading books out loud and does every week at story time. And when those kids grow older, like these homeschool students, she makes sure they still get the books they need. Yes, it's a place to, to come borrow materials, but it's also a place to gather and to socialize and have programs. And for her, that social part has special value. Barbara says since her husband passed, she lives alone back in the woods. So this gives me a chance to interact with people, which I really like. Pete says Barbara is the library. We all know what are we going to do if, if Barb stops being a librarian, as if that could ever happen someday. It seems unlikely. For people in this small town, the librarian and the library have become essential. They sure have. Barbara will receive her award this summer at the National Conference of Small Libraries uh, out in the Midwest. And it was interesting. Barbara said that they have a little over 400 members of the library, people with cards from their two towns, Liberty and Montville, which are part of it. And they only have a budget of $30,000 a year to run that library. She said they have a tremendous number of people who essentially use the library remotely. They order books. They order audio books, all of that. Never set foot inside, but that's how they use the library. I was struck that it wasn't formed until 1995, right. which makes me think that this might be one of the newer libraries mm. in the entire state, because most true. of them have been around for a long time. Yeah, I mean, you think of all these little towns have, have had libraries for years and years, and uh, Liberty doesn't. So there's, I will also say a little forward uh, promotion here. Right next door to the libraries is fabulous business the, called the Liberty Tool Company, which has just it's a, 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 a toy store for me, all kinds of old tools. So we're going there in a couple of weeks. My wife has told me that I ought to do that story. It sounds like you're going to beat me to it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Straight ahead on 206.